Hello, everyone. Uh, thank you for coming to this uh, webinar. My name is Charles Wang. So today I'm going to talk about Shark, which is a module in EUQ. Uh, so in the past two days, some of you might have uh, been in the training of EUQ. If so, you should uh, already know uh, that what, what, is, what Shark is. It is a module in EUQ. Uh, it provides uh, ground motion simulated using finite element master. Uh, the simulated ground motion can be used at the input motion when you perform structural analysis in EUQ. Uh, for those who haven't attended EUQ training, uh, EUQ is a software for uh, earthquake engineering when you can uh, use it uh, to evaluate the building's response to earthquakes with uh, uncertainty quantification. So what is shown here is the uh, a shark module inside EUQ. Uh, today's talk will follow uh, this outline. I divide it into three parts. Uh, we are going to talk about the ground, uh, the background and the theory. Then we are going to talk about the user interface at the end. We'll show some examples uh, and I will demonstrate them in the application. The first part is the background and theory. Um, so in, in earthquake scenarios, uh, when the ruptures or faults generate seismic wave, which is then transmitted and modified by, uh, for example, past effects and further side effects, uh, when it is transmitted through soil layers before it reaches the ground surface. So due to the side effects, the motion will be amplified at the ground surface. And the side effects or side response are well recognized to have a uh, profound influence on superficial ground motions as a result of uh, the variability in superficial geology and the complexity in its uh, characterization, particularly for nonlinear side response. So for many engineering design projects, a site-specific analysis of side effects uh, to simulate the ground motion and estimate the amplification of the motion uh, is very necessary to quantify the seismic hazard. So site response analysis uh, are used uh, to estimate this kind of ground motion at the surface, which is propagated from the bedrock as a function of the properties of the soil profile and the back bedrock ground motion at the base of the soil profile. So, side response analysis, it is a precursor to soil structure interaction analysis, which is an essential component in the seismic analysis of structures. Um, output from the side response analysis provides input to soil structure interaction analysis later. So, in the site response analysis, uh, this nonlinear three dimensional wave propagation problem has traditionally been solved using one dimensional methods that are simpler and significantly reduce the required components of effort. So, one dimensional site response analysis is mainly performed using two methods. The first one is the uh, uh, frequency domain equivalent linear analysis. Uh, you, uh, such kind of uh, analysis can be performed using software such as Shake. So this method was first proposed in 1967. The equivalent linear approach for site response analysis, it calculates and approximate uh, nonlinear response through a linear analysis with soil layer properties adjusted to account for the softening during the earthquake shaking. So the layer properties uh, in the equivalent linear method are adjusted through an iterative process uh, involving a series of linear analysis that can be performed either in the frequency or time domain. A linear analysis is first performed using the initial values of shear modules and damping ratios and the peak 
uh, strings in the soil layer in the soil layers. Uh, they are computed later. So an effective shear string is then calculated for each layer by multiplying the peak shear string by an effective shear the shear string ratio. This string value, along with the assumed or experimentally determined modules, uh, reduction and damping curves is used to update the shear modules and damping ratio for each layer. The updated values of shear modules and damping ratio are then used to perform another iteration of linear analysis. And the iterations are continued until the shear string perform. Uh, shear strings uh, come from a consecutive analysis match within a predefined tolerance. So that is the basic idea of the uh, uh, equivalent linear analysis. The second matter is the time domain nonlinear analysis. It employs nonlinear heteritic soil models. So the nonlinear method simulate the heteritic stress strain response of the soil and is therefore potentially more realistic than the equivalent linear method. So the soil profile in the nonlinear method can be modeled using either uh, lump mass system or uh, finite element methods. So research showed that the equivalent linear method is unable to rep uh, reproduce the high strain rate uh, and the high frequency acceleration response. For example, it usually produces uh, almost constant spectral accelerations in the short period range. So what is shown here is a chart which uh, highlights the range where equivalent linear analysis is not sufficient to capture the realistic response of some high strain rate in high frequency waves. So the linear method, a uh, nonlinear method simulate the uh, hysteretic stress strain response of the soil. And uh, uh, therefore it is potentially uh, more realistic than the equivalent linear method. So the soil profile, as you can see uh, in the finite element method, uh, here it shows uh, two, uh, it shows two uh, method to, sim uh, to simulate this soil column. Uh, especially in the finite element method, the soil column is divided into elements. So you can either use 2D or 3D. So this uh, column of elements is supported vertically at the base and periodic boundary conditions are applied to all elements in the global X and uh, another direction uh, another horizontal direction if you are using 3D elements. So uh, uh, at the base, the Lysmar dashboards are applied uh, uh, in, in uh, two horizontal directions uh, to simulate the underlying bedrock. And we use a viscous uniaxial material to define the dashboard. So this uh, this dashboard, it is developed following the method of uh, Joner and Chen, in, which is developed in 1975. So the dashboard co coefficients are defined as the product of the mass density and the shear wave velocity of the underlying uh, bedrock. And above the uh, groundwater table, the pore pressure uh, uh, degrees of freedom are fixed to allow drainage. And the pore pressure degrees of freedom for all nodes below the groundwater table are left free to indicate saturated undrained conditions. So uh, what is SHARC? So it's the acronym of Site Specific Seismic Hazard Analysis and Research Kit. Research kit. So this tool can be used for site response analysis, uh, as its name indicates. It focuses on simulated wave propagation along soil depths uh, using the finite element method. 
the intended audience for SHARP is researchers and practitioners interested in performing site-specific analysis of soil uh, during earthquakes, and also educators who are interested in teaching site response analysis in their classes. The tool provides a friendly uh, user interface uh, to input and modify the soil layers using tables, uh, while the build soil profile and the final element mesh being visualized simultaneously. So results uh, including acceleration, velocity, displacement, uh, pore pressure, uh, spectral acceleration, uh, all can be visualized in this app. Uh, so uh, there are some features that I want to demonstrate. Uh, firstly, it has 2D and 3D elements uh, with coupled deformation and fluid flow. And it has uh, advanced the linear and nonlinear soil material model that is already implemented and can be used uh, it can do total stress and effective stress analysis. And you can shake the soil in two directions. Uh, and it can do uh, flat or slope uh, free field analysis. And it accounts for the finite rigidity of an underlying elastic medium, which is the bedrock. So it uses finite element method to simulate the couple deformation and the fluid flow, then it needs these uh, uh, governing equations to describe this physics behind it. So in 1956, Veal developed the governing equations by integrating Darcy's law when he was trying to solve the consolidation problem of soils. Later in uh, 1999, uh, Zinkiewicz uh, simplify the governing equations by removing high order components of the fluid motion relatively relative to the uh, solid skeleton of the soil matrix. So uh, the plasticity deformation of soil material is a, a constant topic in uh, geotechnical engineering. So sitting in the core of the theory of continuum plasticity is the yield surface and hardening laws, et cetera. So we have uh, eight soil models that can be used in Shark now, uh, including elastic and the plastic. A feature of Shark uh, that might be interesting to the geotechnical community is uh, liquefaction analysis. So liquefaction is a phenomenon in which the pore uh, water pressure increases and the effective uh, stress reduced to zero. So the soil loses its uh, stiffness and the strength and uh, behave like a liquid. So in response, this is due to uh, its, in, uh, res its response to a sudden change uh, in the stress, for example, the earthquake loading. So the Liquefaction problem is challenging because it involves high plasticity, nonlinearity, and uncertainty across different scales. Now, Shark is capable of capturing the liquefaction uh, phenomenon during the shaking. So I'll talk about this uh, in later slides. Now we go, uh, we go to the second part, uh, which is the user interface. Uh, the code is uh, uh, made to public on GitHub. And we have a online documentation. We also have a forum where you can put your question and also give some advices. Since this code is open source, you can contribute your, uh, your code to the GitHub repo. So the interface uh, looks like this. Uh, so in the following slides, I will talk about each component of this UI. So as you can see uh, on the left, there are two graphics. Uh, the first one, we call it the soil column. 
So it defines uh, the layered column, as you can see. And the second one, it is a finite element mesh. Uh, and between them, there's an arrow. So when you click this arrow, uh, the finite element mesh uh, graphic will collapse. And you can click it to bring it back. And on the right hand side, we have operations error. And we also have a table where you can, so in the operations error, you can uh, add a layer or delete a la layer. You can set uh, the groundwater table and you can perform the analysis. So in the table, you can modify the properties of the soil. And uh, at the bottom, you can see there's a tabs here where you can configure the analysis and uh, do some modification in the layer properties tab and visualize the results in the response tab. Yeah. So in the operations, there are a place where you can set the water table height. Uh, then if you click the plus button, a layer will be added and uh, the minus button will delete a layer that is selected. So when you click on a soil layer, um, the tab uh, of that layer will be activated automatically at the bottom as you can see. And this layer is highlighted in the table and also in the soil column. In the configure tab, uh, you can define several uh, uh, parameters, several variables. The first one is uh, open seas. So if you input the uh, uh, executable path of open seas, it will call open seas to do the finite element analysis. But if you leave it alone or leave it blank, it will uh, perform the finite element analysis uh, uh, by the engine, which is already implemented in itself. Uh, but originally, the implement, uh, implementation comes from uh, OpenSeas. And you can define a rock motion, which is a JSON file. So you have two options, uh, 2D and uh, 1D and 2D shaking. So if you input a uh, ground motion file that has only one shaking defined in the file, it will automatically detect this is 1D. And you can also define a slope of your ground surface. If you input a 2D ground motion file, um, you can see the checkbox is highlighted in the uh, in front of the 2D shaking. So after all this has been uh, uh, prepared, you can click and analyze to start the analysis. At the bottom, there will be a progress bar uh, showing. At any time, you can terminate this analysis by clicking Q. The analysis is done and it pops up a window. Then if you click, I know, it will, uh, brings, uh, it will bring up the uh, response tab. Also, you can see the maximum value along that uh, on the left-hand side. If you click on an element to select it, uh, in the response tab, you will see the response of the selected element and nodes. Okay, in the third part, I'm going to show some uh, examples. These examples can be downloaded from DesignSafe. Uh, it has some problem in this morning, but in the chat window, you have another uh, link, which is from Box. Um, these two links point to the same uh, file. So 
So I will run the examples in the application later. But now, uh, please let me just give you a de uh, short description of this element that I'm going to run. Uh, so this example, it comes from uh, OpenSys website. It is a 3D uh, column uh, shaking in one uh, direction. It has three layers. The first layer, the thickness is two meter. The second is eight meter. The third one is 20 meter. And we are going to simulate the, this column using PDMYO2 model. So the slope of this ground is two degree. And this table, it defines the uh, properties of the soil layers. As you can see, you have thickness, density, uh, shear wave velocity. You can choose a material for that layer and you can define the element size for each layer. So this is the uh, material parameters of the PDMYO2 that it, you are defining for the first layer. So each layer you, you can define different parameters of the model that you're using. This is for the second layer and this for the third, third layer. So we will look at these numbers later in the app. And here you are defining the, uh, the rock uh, properties. Uh, basically what will be used uh, is the, is the uh, it doesn't matter here because the rock uh, property uh, here, if I go back to uh, the previous slides. So as you can see in this table, you also have the rock material, uh, rock property that is defined. So basically it will use the density and shear wave velocity to calculate the rock uh, parameters. So what is shown here, it doesn't matter a lot. Then uh, when you finish the analysis, this is the visualization of the results of this example. Okay, uh, I open the application and run the simulation. So as you can see, uh, you can click uh, the plus or minus button to operate on the soil layers. So you can select one and when you click the uh, plus button, it will add a layer under this one, for example, here, right? And you can change the name of the layer You can change almost any values uh, in the table. You just need to click it. For example, give it this value. Uh, you can change the element size um, or select a material model for this layer, uh, right? So you, as you can see, when you click this layer, it is highlighted here on the left. And also the layer property tabs is activated. Now you, you can see, select different material types. And configurations here, this is my open system path and you can change it to yours. Uh, the rock motion is here. Okay, you can change it by just the type the path here or, or just paste it here, or you can click this button to select the location. Now I will leave it blank. So you can click this button to select a rock motion file, which will be found in the example that we released. So 
this is a uh, 3D. As you can see, this check is now it is uh, on. That means uh, shark detected this two motion, two directional motion in this file. So it put this check here. And you can also change the slope. Now you can click analysis. Oh, it tells you uh, layer one has uh, the material PM4 sand defined here. Uh, but T PM4 sand is uh, just for uh, 2D elements. It cannot be used in 3D analysis. But you have this 2D uh, shaking, that means it will automatically choose a 3D element for, for the co column. So it cannot do the analysis. We can change it to another model that can be used in 3D analysis. Now the analysis is doing uh, you can kill it if you find something that is wrong. And let me reduce a layer here. And this time, let's use OpenSys to do the simulation. Where's my OpenSys? Okay. Click analyze. So when you try to uh, uh, build your model and uh, you are not sure about some parameters, the suggestion is to always use a larger element size uh, because it, it, it is fast. So you can quickly identify what is wrong in, in your uh, soil properties. Now the, the analysis is finished and the result is bring up to the window. So if you click on the mesh, for example, I select this one. As you can see, there are two uh, blue arrows here. It shows the uh, nodes that are selected. And in the response tab, you can see uh, the motions for the node uh, is uh, plotted. You can hand over the motion. It will be highlighted in the graphic. And you can also click on it. it uh, this makes it be uh, hidden. You can hide all of them or just show only one of them. Uh, so this tab is called PGA. It's a peak ground acceleration. As you can see, you have two curves. That means uh, that, that is because you have this 2D shaking. So you have two direction results. Uh, you can hover on each node to see the exact value of it. So in this tab, it shows the maximum uh, strength. In the maximum displacement, it, you can see the displacement of each node. Uh, this one is the stress ratio. And the last one is the uh, exceeding poor pressure ratio. So this one really define, uh, shows you the liquefaction uh, of your soil column. As you can see, if the value is higher when it is close to one, uh, probably the, this soil has liquefied. As you can see, it is this soil layer that liquefied here. And in the 
in the results that you downloaded uh, here uh, we have put two examples so we have provided a uh, input JSON file and a ground motion file so the input JSON file is the input to shark so if you go to file and save the analysis it will give you a my JSON. it will save a JSON file for you and if you leave this application and if you come back uh, you can reload it by open uh, here okay now I want to show uh, the example that you have downloaded which is this one I will load it so this is the example that we are talking in in the slides uh, as you can see it has three layers so, okay now we are going to run it I think this one will take longer yeah probably several minutes uh, when it is finished we will show its uh, comparison with open seas uh, oh here we are using open seas and then if you do another analysis you leave this one this path blank we will do uh, the analysis itself and later we will be able to compare them by this MATLAB script that I provided in the example. Let me open it. So we will run this script later when the analysis is finished. Uh, but before that, uh, I'd like to show you something uh, about the analysis results. Here, uh, if you are a Mac user, uh, you can find these uh, folders in, on your machine. Uh, the first one, it is the analysis folder of Shark. Uh, this one, it shows you the path of the simulated ground motion, which is actually used in EEUQ later. So let me open this uh, folder here. Oh, if you are a Windows user, uh, they can be found here. So replace the user with your username. And okay. Let me just open this folder. As you can see, uh, there's a motion that is generated. I think this one, this motion is from a previous analysis. Let's just wait the analysis finished here. And there is a model.tico. So when you are using OpenSeas in Shark, it will generate this model. You can open it and see what is going on here. Basically, it defines an OpenSeas model for this analysis. Uh, if you, you open this directory, it shows the output from the analysis. No matter you are using OpenSeas or you are just using Shark, the analysis result will be shown here. And Shark actually read this folder to generate the post process result and show it in the application. But you can also use some other software, for example, the MATLAB code that we are sharing to do uh, 
more uh, post processing as you want. So this one, it, it is actually an example uh, showing how to read these uh, results. Okay, the analysis is done. And it is open since. Now if you remove this and you do it again, you will get another simulation which is performed by Sharp. Uh, I think this is time consuming if I do it here. Uh, I actually have already prepared the simulated results that I did this morning. So what I did is I performed the analysis and I go to this folder, right? I copy the, uh, I copy the analysis folder. And I paste it in the result, in the plot directory, I paste it here. Oh, sorry, it's not copied. Put it here, right? And I will run this plot results script. Let me double check. Okay, here. I defined where it can find these uh, results, right? This name should be the same as these ones. Now I run this script. There are many elements here. So I guess the post-process is a little bit slow. Okay, here, as you can see, uh, the results are almost identical to each other. Uh, the first one is the displacement in, in the first direction. The second graph is uh, the displacement in the second horizontal direction. And at the bottom, you can see the uh, pool water pressure of a selected uh, node. Okay. And what what others do I want to show you? Oh, is about the rock motion. So you need to define the motion file in the format that is readable by Sharp. Uh, let me just open the motion, uh, rock motion file here. So it is a JSON file. Uh, as you can see, uh, we are not using units and random variables here, so they can be blank. And you can put some descriptions and give it a name. And you need to define the number of steps that is the steps of this motion. Uh, then you can define the, the shaking directions. And you can see there are two directions here, X and Y. Uh, they are velocity values. They will be defined later. Uh, and then if you go to time series, you can see the actual values of these uh, steps. So this, the number of the uh, steps should be consistent with the length of this data. If you expand it, you can see all this data here. Okay, this is the uh, 2D shaking uh, motion file. And I will open another, uh, which is this one. It is one directional shaking. As you can see, you have only one pattern defined here. It's the X directional shaking. 
and you in the time series you have only one uh, data defined. This is the difference between 2D and 1D shaking. Um, so if you have defined a 2D shaking uh, input motion and you input it here, and you don't see the check here, highlighted here, the check, that means uh, there's something wrong in your, in your motion file. And we also provide a, yeah, in the, in the example you downloaded, there's another folder called 2D. Uh, you can also try this one when you have some time. And what others do I need to talk about? Oh, let, let's also show uh, how Shark is working um, in OpenSeas. I will open open uh, no, in EUQ. So I will open this application, EUQ application here. And I will load the file. So these are EUQ examples, which can also be downloaded from Design Safe. Uh, I will choose this example. And I can open the preferences to check if my Python is defined correctly here. And in the event, uh, now you can choose to use side response, which is actually shock. Uh, let's just make it easier to use a larger model, a larger size. Okay. And make sure everything is fine here. This is 2D is detected. Uh, now I click analyze. Okay, now the motion on the ground surface has been simulated by Shark. Uh, you can run the analysis of EUQ by clicking run. Okay, it's taking some time. Oh, it's done. Now you can realize these results. Oh, it's not responding. Oh, oh it's here. Okay. Uh, I think uh, that concludes my uh, talk here. And we have a exercise here. Uh, you can do it after this training. Uh, you can repeat the above uh, 3D example here, but you can use 2D elements. Uh, that means you can modify the rock motion that we provided in, in this example, in this 3D example. So just include one directional shaking, then you can perform the analysis in just uh, using just 2D elements and see how the results uh, is uh, different or is the same when you compare it with the 3D elements analysis. Okay, thank you. Uh, I, I think I can take questions now. Great, thank you very much, Charles, for the introduction to Shark 
and also how it is uh, incorporated into EEUQ for uh, site response analysis. There are a couple of questions. Um, and, and uh, the first question relates to uh, the uncertainty quantification uh, in EEUQ. Um, can, uh, yeah. can users do uh, uncertainty analysis uh, within the shark components? Uh, or are the random variables limited to um, maybe more of the, the structural uh, components? Uh, for the structural component in EUQ, you can do uh, you can do some random uh, variables. You can define some random variables, uh, but the, the randomness in Shark is not implemented now. Uh, we are working on this, so maybe in next release it will be available. You can randomize the soil properties here, but for now the current release cannot do this. Okay, great. So we look forward to uh, a future release where the uncertainty can be included uh, in the site response as well. Um, the next question is for the example you provided. Um, you had a, a beta angle uh, or beta slope of a, a minus 80 degrees. Can you explain um, where the minus sign or where that uh, 80 degrees is defined or how it's defined? Yeah. Uh, so So if you go to the online documents of Shark, uh, there is a uh, definition of the angles. Oh, it's a little bit slow here. Uh, use it. Yeah. Under the usage, and you move down. Yeah, here, there are the angles of the slope. Uh, so x1 and x2 are your shaking direction. So if your slope is located like this, uh, alpha or beta should be defined like this. Great. Yeah. Great, thank you very much. Mm -hmm. uh, another question is about the, uh, the mesh dimensions. Um, I guess the thickness, uh, how, are we, how are the units defined? Is that also in the documentation? Uh, the units, all these uh, units used in Shark is international units. So for example, if you have meter, uh, you have length, it should be defined in meter. Uh, if you need to define time, it's in seconds. So all the units should be in international units. Fantastic. And I guess the last question is just that the um, Shark is a separate uh, executable. Are there any features uh, within uh, Shark that are not implemented uh, in EEUQ or um, are they um, kind of a, a mirror functionality? Can you repeat your question? Uh, are all of the features of Shark available in the EEUQ uh, mm -hmm. interface? Yes, uh, all of those features are available. Yeah. Uh, okay, there's a one difference here you might have been uh, noticed. So as you can see, there are several columns here, right? Elements, material, VS. And if you noticed here, I actually have a additional column, which is uh, defining the color of the Layer. For example, it can be changed to red, but this feature is not uh, shown in the released version. Uh, we thought it might not be necessary, so we didn't include it. I just uh, show it up here so I can change the colors as I want. But uh, if you are interested to use this feature, please uh, let us know. We will put it in the next release. Excellent. Uh, that concludes the, uh, the questions uh, from the audience. I want to um, thank you, Charles, on behalf of the attendees here for the presentation and the introduction to Shark as well as uh, its implementation in EEUQ.
uh, for the attendees. Uh, we appreciate your questions and your participation today in the tool training. Uh, this wraps up our third training on EEUQ. Uh, we invite you to uh, other trainings coming up for uh, performance-based engineering, as well as the wind engineering with uncertainty quantification. Uh, there's also, uh, you can go back and look at videos from uh, our recent training on QuoFem. Um, and I just appreciate your participation here uh, in the tool training. Um, and that will conclude uh, today's uh, training on EEUQ.